And I think um, we also need to know how to start to really combine radiotherapy with the new drugs. I mean, immunotherapy is now here, it's with us, and that's clearly making a difference to patients. But there's been very little in the way of studies to combine that with radiotherapy. What we've heard about here is the Pacific study, which is offering immunotherapy as a maintenance treatment after radiotherapy, and that seems to be very exciting. But it's at the moment just applicable to a small niche of patients, those who've had concurrent treatment. Um, so I think we need to expand the portfolio and see whether that benefit is going to be there for the surgical patients uh, and for patients getting sequential chemoradiotherapy, which is probably the majority of patients who are treated radically in the UK at the moment. Um, in, in that field, we do have the ADSCAN trial running, and that's looking at dose escalating, intensifying the radiotherapy treatment to see if we can get that working better for patients. So that's a sort of pick the winner design. So what we're trying to do is test four of the UK different fractionations, pick a winner and take that into a phase three study against the more conventional fractionations. I think the other important thing, I think particularly as a radiotherapy, is the thing that's driven radiotherapy over the years is our ability to image. And it's clear that that ability is improving all the time. And again, exciting times. I think we've got MR and MR Linux on the horizon. So I think the image quality they give us as radiotherapists is a, another step up, perhaps, from the, the CT images. And we've done quite a bit of research in Sheffield with MR, particularly functional MR, so using hyperpolarized gases to identify functioning parts of lung, and then we can adapt our radiotherapy plans to avoid those. And if we can do that, hopefully we can make the treatment safer and reduce the, the possibilities of serious lung side effects that we can see with radiotherapy.